thank you all for coming and sharing the feelings and sharing here in our so-called German Zoom. <laughs> But actually, we are not German. We so are. cold, German Zoom. <laughs> the cold also. <laughs> But now our hearts will be warmed. Thank you all for coming and joining. And we heard, we just spoke shortly with Gurdjieff. He called us and he said, all oh, the German ladies arrived. Jai Rade! Safely, Pratishwara, Heike and Anita. Wow. You come in the last, last second from Gurdjieff. I'm very hot. <laughs> wow. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Gurdjieff. You are ready for the blessings of Vrindavan. This lady is here the first time in India. And we have a very busy time. Birthday from Radhika and eating and eating and masada <laughs> and she must a little learn much uh, in the first day, but slowly, slowly and poor this Wonderful. Day, go to rest. Jai <laughs> Rade. <laughs> we will join you soon. <laughs> so today we have the good luck that our Kishori and Kanai. Kishori is Kanai. Kanai is Kishori will be here for us to, yeah. to share our heart's uh, favorite meditation service that she, uh, verse that she has at the moment. And uh, she would like to read this and share this with us. And also thank you for Gauravani that you are coming. If you are wondering where we are here, we are together with Sakshu and Mohini. In Düren. We had a very nice... Uh, Beautiful place here. Yes. Like a festival we celebrate here together. Guravani was there with family and uh, also Madhuri and... Sudevi. Sudevi and Sukriti. Madhurika. Madhurika. So many, many devotees we celebrate together here yesterday. Vandana. Vandana, Vandana. was here, yes. We uh, had a very beautiful festival for Nityananda's appearance day, which was also Gauravani's birthday. And the day before was Mohini's birthday. So we had a, a wonderful, wonderful festival. We had we did a lot of kirtans. And in Madhuri's studio, we were yesterday whole day. So we all feel blessed and we feel inspired. And if all the translations are set, Then we can start, and we saw also our dear Tarun Baba is there. Adi Adi, welcome, and to Rabasuna and all the devotees. Adi Adi, maybe you you think about where is this picture? You think it is? Uh, you know it's from somewhere. Maybe of course you, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tarun Baba, huh? sure, Radha Kund. This is the very famous uh, picture of the Leela with Radha and Mohan us in the Radha Kund and splashing each other. We had this also. And this was a uh, Chakshu's birthday for Mohini. It's made by yes. an artist. So yeah. Yamuna. Yamuna. Yamuna is also a very famous artist that he comes from Austria and Gurdjieff has blessed him and he has been there. They are very uh, sweet couple. They have arranged it to make it originally. Look originally, it's painted by my godbrother and Yamuna. He enhanced it. It is not hit by him, so he enhanced the quality of it. But originally, it's from my godbrother, uh, who is I think living right now. Yeah, good oh, question. No. Where he is, I don't know where he is, but he was painting that huge, huge picture in Radakund and Yamuna wow. does. He, he did the enhancement of it. You know the year when he painted? No. In the 80s? 90s. I think in the 90s. In the late 90s, 90s yeah. maybe beginning of 2000, something like that. Uh, we will think about this. Which nationality is the, is the artist? That's a good question. I think something Russian, something like that, <laughs> something in that direction, but I'm not 100% sure. Vrindavan Das, Vrindavan Das, I think is his name. Uh -huh. Very nice devotee. Yeah. <laughs> he came, he came, uh, he came to Mongeraj Mandir once with his art. I remember, 
He also mm -hmm. got the blessings of Radha Mohan and Gurudev, and he is Russian. He hit, uh, he hit my good uh, three Guru Mantras are uh, there. Three Mantras of the of my Guru Pampara are uh, in this in this photo. <laughs> Wow. Baba is there, Guru Param Gurudev is there, and Parar Par Gurudev is there. It becomes so beautiful all by this. Left, um, left side, left side up. Yeah, these are the three mantras in the pick. Yeah. Guru Manchari, Param Guru Manchari, and Parat Par Guru Manchari. Wow. Beautiful. Amazing. Yes, we are all happy that this. This is now here in Mohini's and Chakshu's we room. Feel, we felt very blessed by this picture yesterday and we was very surprised that Chakshu arranged this. And I think Present. Mohini was also very happy about this. <laughs> okay, everyone. Now we are ready also for yes. some more Leela here. And uh, Kishore has prepared verse 20 to read. It's not exactly that Leela, but it's about in the morning. How, how the Tulasi Manjari is serving Swami. Please, Kishori. Radhe Radhe. Radhe. To all, thank you for giving me this seva. Radhe. So we are reading verse 20 from Sri Sibirapu Sumanjali. When may this maid servant, after washing your lotus feet and brushing your teeth with a twig, seat you in the bathroom and having anointed you? with very fragrant oils massage you there. When may this maidservant after washing your lotus feet and brushing your teeth with a twig. Seat you in the bathroom and having anointed you with very fragrant oils, massage you there. Notes. In the previous verse, Sri Raghunath had a vision of his service of washing Sri Mati's lotus feet and in this verse, he sees him herself Rinsing Srimati's mouth, brushing her teeth with a twig, taking her into another room and massaging her with fragrant oils there. How intense is his devotional yearning and how vivid and genuine are his spiritual visions. When the sadhaka has such a vision, he feels as if the beloved deity takes him by the hand. Jairade. 
I think this is so sweet. How Swahani is taking Raghunath or Tulsi Mandri by the hand. Sometimes, or actually all the time, <laughs> I am asking myself when this will be. When will this happen to me? When will the time be of my purification and my good fortune that these things will happen? But actually, by reading and hearing this beautiful explanation and feelings of Tulsi Manjari, Raghunathas, there's a hope that also this will can and may and by Gurudev's mercy will happen into my heart. Because it doesn't happen exactly outside. This is a deep internal blessing to receive the full mercy that Srimati Radhika is taking her dasi by the hand. It's not that I can do it, I cannot produce it, I can prepare my consciousness, I can be eager and I can pray to my Guru Manjari that she takes me by the hand and pulling me out of my different, different layers that I want to share on this. One more point, Sumiti. I have also recognized that um, actually Adhika could do all these things by her own, like we do. Cleaning teeth, doing this and that. But actually she is offering her whole body to the seva of her manjaris. And uh, this is a uh, uh, this is a real mercy, what she is doing to us. And Raghunath is explaining this for a meditation picture that we get when we meditate on this, how we use paraphernalia to, uh, to do this seva, cleaning the teeth and massaging and all of this, so we can meditate on the beauty of the teeth of Swamini, the lips, the face. And she is, she is, uh, Raghunathas, Rati Manjari is preparing us for this service, service. And when is the first word what Kishori reading. And this is the, the, the main thing. And we, we were eagerly waiting for this, for this moment. This is the main moment in our, all our lifetimes. When, when will this happen? How Suniti also said, no? And I think we have to be very eager in this to get this view, this service. And uh, there is no time to meditate on mundane things. There is no time for the material world in our meditation. We have to give our concentration really on this what is Raguna and others giving to us as a meditation picture, the beauty of Radhika, and we can be sure that she offer her full body to get the chance 
that we can do the seva. And this is the beauty in this verse. This picture we can get in our mind, what Gurudev always explaining. We have to use our mind properly for this kind of pictures. And then the mind is occupied by the spiritual world, actually. And there is no chance and no time for the material world. Jai Shirate. When the sadhaka has such a vision, he feels as if the beloved deity takes him by the hand. I feel it's very beautiful what Suniti says, that we are not the doer. The only thing we can do is to prepare our hearts to be ready for this moment. I feel that in this sentence we can feel the lamentations and the, the lamentations of Raghunath when he is praying for the ser service to get the seva. And then finally, when, when he gets this vision of the seva in his Sita Swarup, there is this feeling like I can lament so much. I can cry all the time. I can try to do so many things, but actually I cannot do anything. Only you can come and take me by the hand and bring me to this consciousness. So the beauty of that verse for me in the last days has been exactly this, that it reminds me that 24-7, especially living in the European world and not being able to be in Vrindavan, where these feelings come with so much less effort, it is so important to always be in the process of purifying the heart. So, Rade, Rade. Rade. You hear me all right from here? Yes. Yeah, just a little word of encouragement. I mean, as you probably know, in the Sanskrit verse, it doesn't say when. The word when doesn't appear there. It really means like what you'd call in German the subjunctive, may I go there. And this is the tradition for translating this, this kind of verse through all the literature. But it's actually not a time. It's not a when. It's may I go there. And that I say that because this means that it's always available to us. Even after we leave this body, in our next incarnation, it's also available to us. We can always make progress towards this. We can always purify, come closer to this experience in our so our own souls. So it doesn't, uh, there's no time limit on it. Without it.
the more purified the heart is, the more vivid these transcendental experiences are. By the mercy of Sri Gora Sundar, all these beautiful things have been revealed by the Acharyas. Is there any greater cause of heart-rending lamentation if I am deprived of the treasure they came to bring, although I was born in Gora Sundar's age. Yeah, that's a nice point also. It's a heart rending, it's a heart felt lamentation. This is the mood of the verse that Baba is giving to us also. It's a it's a deep felt desire. And uh, as we hear so many times. We are lucky that we, we took birth now. And although it is also right what you said, Udava, also it is right to say that not to waste time, not to waste too much time. Because sometimes Gurudev also say that we don't know when the next incarnation will be and how it will happen. Because now is the lucky time. Now we are with our Gurudevas, we have, we have so many Mahajanas uh, books and help and prayers and the nice devotees who help also to go further and to feel more and Gaurasundara's appearance was not long ago, only some few hundred years ago and I was born now. I am now incarnated. Now is the time. That is also something that I try to make it happen in the presence and live in the presence and pray for this. May it, may it be now in this lifetime. Mm. May it be possible. I know I'm a fool. I'm a But I got the mercy, I also know that. I have my Gurudev is waiting for this to happen. He is waiting to take me by the hand. Guru Manjari is waiting also. So I think two emotions are always flip flopping. <laughs> On the one hand, it is eternal and there's nothing to lose. On the other hand, it is urgent. On the other hand, May it happen now when the winds are so, you know, in a good condition and I have a captain. Mm. Really good, good point. Time. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Very good point and very well said to uh, Suniti Didi. It's an auspicious moment. Huh. Yeah. Yes, the winds are good and we are floating in the mercy boat. We have a good boat and it's, it's auspicious also now. In the previous verse, Sri Raghunathas had a vision of himself washing Sri Radhika's lotus feet in the morning. And when this vision disappears, he feels a greatly burning sensation 
in his heart. Seva dia prana rakhu. Save my life by giving me your devotional service. Actually, I I had a desire this morning that Gaur our dear Gauravani ji would sing his heart felt prayer on this. He has he has composed from his own feelings and a song with the Seva Dia Prana Rako. Seva Dia, please give me your service and keep me alive. Prana Rako means also keep me alive in this in this feeling and this desire to serve you. Give me life. We could also say, let me awaken as your service maid servant. Let me awaken in this and uh, let me live in this. Here it is translated, save my life by giving me your devotional service. Means make me experience eternal life in your service, Swamini. I don't know if Gauravani is able or willing or because he had a ha headache, he could not sing this morning. So if you want to add something, please share Gauravani. If not, it's also fine. Okay, it looks maybe they are not online right now or anybody else. Can you we have all these. One more. Yes? Actually, I'm here with Madhuri and I had no okay. idea how to, how to do this technical thing. Yeah. So? so, but actually, still I, I have a headache. It's much better, but uh, it's not the time for me to sing. So, but everyone who he, who has the CD Golden One uh, has actually the song. So maybe if you like to hear it, somebody could just play it. Hope you feel that better, dear. Good to be so. Yes, I do that. Can anybody share on the meaning of this that Radhika's devotional service gives us life, keeps us alive, saves our lives? This is the meaning of the spiritual life. And um, on one hand, what Suniti explained is um, that to feel guilty. So this guiltiness is only in the material uh, consciousness possible. <clears throat> on the other hand, we have a, a perfect spiritual body. There is no question of guiltiness. And if we enter this uh, spiritual body and enter the 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 this uh, devotional service then life starts that is the meaning of this giving life because we need these visions to uh, to start the spiritual life we have no experience in this Nobody of us has any experience out of the material world. We need this information and these feelings and these pictures to get an idea from 
another level. Actually, no one of us is there. But from time to time, they come to visit us and give us a few out of this world. So, and they use the most beautiful examples what are happening in this world. Gold, different kinds of flowers, trees, uh, gemstones. They use this to make a little glimpse visible what is happened in this abode so that we can get a small picture. But even this small picture <clears throat> able to enlive us, to give life in our spiritual vision. And our Gurudev, if he is in a constant, constant line, in the pipeline, from this eternal liberated souls who got, who gave the pictures, he can give the bath what is needed to get a real view of this, to, to in life, this spiritual body. This is meaning to give life in it. So it needs this eternal soul to come here to give an, a picture to us, and it needs a living guru to enliven this spiritual body. And it needs our concentration to continue growing in this body. Then it will happen that we are, even if we are in this world with the body, but in the same time, we are growing our eternal body and the pictures become more intense. And then after some time, we can uh, um, recognize, we can live in this also. We will get also these pictures. At the moment, we are secondhand devotees, sometimes I say. And, uh, but then we are not second hand, we are fresh, first hand. And so, Kishori, <clears throat> so Kishori, you see, therefore this was why I pushed you. This was why I, I tried to push you to take Diksha. I like to say two things, you know, when you speak about birth and taking birth and all these things. Yes, we have this material body, but actually What is the real birth? What is the real birth? Jiva Goswami and the Acharyas, they say the real birth is when Guru is giving you Diksha Mantra. So when Diksha happens, that is actually the beginning of everything. That is the beginning of your Bhajan. And that is the beginning of your actual birth. So actually, the Goswamis never mentioned it in the Shastra, really by name. But actually, Diksha is not completed when you don't receive Siddha Pranali. So, so they didn't mention the word Siddha Pranali, but they mentioned uh, Siddha uh, Swarup Siddhi. Prabhupada mentioned Swarup Siddhi. All, they, they mentioned that, but because it is a very, very intimate and personal process, the Acharyas didn't mention it really in the Shastra. So what means this giving life? What means this... Mm, having a birth. So actually, therefore, it is so important, I always tell my mind, and we always go in the Priya, that the Diksha Mantras you receive from your Gurudev, they are the most important thing in the whole day. So this is the most important thing. Never, never, ever neglect them. Never, ever space them out. You know, the Diksha Mantras are your pipeline, your connection to the eternal realm. So everything is there in these Diksha Mantras. And the process of Diksha is then completed when Gurudev uh, has given you the information of your eternal Siddhadeha, which was beautifully described by Gorasundara Baba. So this is the actual birth. It is, it is not without hope. Many people are sitting here and thinking, oh God, 
<clears throat> I have not received Siddha Pranali yet. Don't worry. Udava said it's not a question of, of a time. You know, you will get it. If your wish for it, if your desire for it is sincere, Gurudev will see the moment. Bhaktivinotako was saying in Harinam Chintamani, when Gurudev sees the desire of the disciple, he will surely receive, really reveal the information of the Siddha there, and that is the real birth. So for me, I can only speak for my lowly self that, you know, giving life to devotional life, I need to have a good consciousness, and this good consciousness starts with identifying not with this material body, we have to have an alternative. I must, I must identify with the role I play every day as a teacher of elementary school, as a, as a, as a husband, as a friend, as a brother, as, a, as so many things. But this is the secondary. This is the secondary identification. Truly in my heart, I have always have to know that I am the Siddhartha, I am a manjari, but this is not very easy. It, it takes effort. We have to do this every morning when we sit down and chant, Klingkishnaya Govindaya Gobijana Valabaya Swaha. This is the connection. We have to do this in that moment. We are speaking at that moment with the Lord. We are not speaking to, with our mind. We are really having religion, religion, connection. By the Diksha Mantras, we have this connection and we have to have this you know, this, this desire in our heart that one day, by the power of mantra, mantra means freedom for the mind and giving us something, so then this will happen. This is the hope we have from the Acharyas. And by the Diksha Mantras and the Holy Name, Srila Narayan Maharaj said, the Diksha Mantras is the water and the pot and the Holy Name is the rice. You need the water, you need the pot to cook the rice. So you need the Diksha Mantras to make everything perfect, to get Swarup City, you need those beautiful, beautiful mantras we received from our Gurudev. This is actually the, the entrance in, this is the embassy, you know, this is the visa where we can enter the spiritual realm, the Diksha Mantras. This is our identification card. This is our identification. Even if you didn't get it, Rupa Goswami is saying, mentally conceive of it. It's a mental religion. We have to mentally desire that form. And when Gurudev sees the time right, he will reveal to yourself your form. Don't give up hope. Never give up hope. Always, even if it's not, you have not, have had, it has not revealed to you. Never give it up. Fake it until you make it. Always imagine yourself inside of those pastimes as a female soul, as a female manjari. And then when Gurudev sees the time is right, you will get everything. And that's why I pushed you at Radhakun Kishore. You remember, I, want, I saw your eagerness. I saw your sincerity. And then I said, you have to do this. And then you did it. And you can speak from your own experience. This is the step everyone has to take to get this second birth. You know, the most important birth. Jai Radhe. Jai Radhe. You are very merciful. I'm sure that... By speaking now, you also inspire very many who are in this Zoom to do the same. And I, I want to actually say that you're right. <laughs> <It's not laughs> me, but I also want to personally thank him, him for uh, inspiring you at the Radha Kun. But I, but I agree with it. Was so obvious, Uda, it was so obvious, Udavai. It was so obvious. I was, I was seeing. I was, I was even. I could catch, I could see the desire and she was like, oh, should I, should I stay or should I go? You know, and I said, there is no question. You have mm -hmm. to take it. I, I remember it clear as day, uh, even, you know, to, this is the, like Suniti said, uh, this moment, this time is auspicious. I am a big rascal. I waste so many time, but I know that I am connected. And this is, you know, always, you have to always have this reassurance that, some, you know, many, how many people challenged me and asked me, yeah, what are you doing? You are a teacher. What are you doing with your Siddha Pranali? One thing I always say, you know, to have your belonging, you know that you belong to a parampara, that you belong to a certain type. You can call it family. Let's say it is a family. So I have a material family and I have a spiritual family. And alone this point that I know, if I'm really sincere and earnest, 
and honest and authentic, I always can sit down, close my eyes and tell myself, hey man, I am not this gross German body who is teaching here. I am always, I can imagine that I am an eternal servant of Raka. And my good have gave me this. I am not using it correctly, but it is such a big assurance and it helps you. I tell you, it helps you. Otherwise, how can we survive this material dilemma? How can we survive in this world? Look around you. People are running around aimlessly. No aim. There is no aim. So sometimes I also think, my goodness, I should do more. And then comes times where I do more than the time come when I do not enough. But always feel assured to, to what you do. You are situated perfectly, always. Because Gurudev has accepted you, that means Radhika has accepted you. I just wanted to add, um, thank you for that, to these two definitions of life, to, to um, the question I was asked about the third. So Gauda's saying life means the flow of inspiration through the parampara and Tarun saying life, that means spiritual birth. But there's maybe a third understanding we can add. And that's the more general one about keeping things alive in the universe, keeping life alive in the universe. And here we can understand the Radhika, devotional service to Radhika as um, keeping Prema Bhakti alive. Sorry, Prema alive, just Prema, short. The loving energy of the of the of the universe, which makes plants grow, which makes uh, human beings live and thrive, which makes the planets revolve, which mean makes everything happen. And for that to stay alive, the loving couple must get up every morning, go home and make breakfast, go back out to the forest and carry on their lila over and over again, so that this love is reproduced and reenacted and inspires us, among other things. But and that energy keeps on going, and that's what makes the planets revolve around each other. That, that prema. So that's a sort of broader sense of the way that love keeps everything going. Yeah, therefore I always say, Udo, thank you. Therefore I always say there is the spiritual meditation, of course, where we have in our Bhajan Kutia, where we meditate on the spiritual lilas. But if we cannot, if we cannot act, in, the, in, in this material world, there is actually no material world if you if you see it correctly, you know. If we if we behave, Gurudev is said, Gurudev always mm -hmm. says, if we behave, if we behave one and if we behave different to another, then we are not authentic. So the, the greatest challenge is to to take what you do in the morning, you know, the spiritual meditation and to transfer it into the daily life. That is the that is the most important challenge for those who who work and for those who have a job and for those who are active in this uh, material schlamassel, you know, this material, <laughs> material world, you know, you have to, you have to be authentic. You cannot do spiritual life very beautifully as a manjari of Radhika. And I cannot, and then I go to school and smash the kids, you know, this is, you have, this is what, what is called the balance. You know, you have to find this, this love is not just in, in Goloka Vrindavan. This love, my guru have said, <laughs> the whole universe, the whole universe is Radhika's place. So it is up to us to to transfer, to let this love uh, shine through ourselves. We have to become a transparent medium for letting this love shine. And this is actually the biggest challenge. And this is a challenge every day. We have to do this every day. One once, if you want, if you behave not nicely in this world, and but you you think you are such a nice mantra, but you don't you know don't cope with the material world is very difficult so therefore in this world we also have to show that we are actually belonging to a spiritual family for me this is the biggest challenge i have a few thoughts in my mind so i try to explain them please correct me if i'm wrong but what you're saying tarun baba is very much inspiring to me uh to not only be a very loving and nice person in my morning meditation but also bring it to my work and 
to every place where I go. Like Gurudev is saying that Jesus is teaching to love your neighbor. And the meaning of neighbor is anyone who is close to me. Like if I am in the train, then anyone I see is my neighbor. If I'm sitting in the room with someone, they're all my neighbor. So how to love everyone. And I feel like, not that I know how to do it, but I feel that the right way, especially being inspired from this verse, is to be in the service mood. Like, yes. if you give me seva, then you save my life. So Also, you see, <clears throat> also, Kishore, you see, I can speak from my own experience. If you don't do, if, you, if I have days where I have no bhajan in the morning or very little bhajan in the morning, where everything is rush hour, rush hour, going to bed late, cannot get up. I had some difficulty sleeping the last month. So if you have, if you are not properly rested and you don't have a proper morning bhajan, it's very, very difficult to do this during the day. You, you, you need to have a strong fundament in the morning. You, you have to like, like your, your smartphone, you need to charge your batteries in the morning with, with good bhajan. And then you can let the love, you can give the love. But if you are not fulfilled in the morning, I, many times I witness this. If you have only one hour, or maybe sometimes only one hour and 20 minutes or something like that. Sometimes I have only 45 minutes because I have to drive early to school. So this is not enough. This is cheating. You know, you cannot expect to walk through the day as a loving person if you have no bhajan in your aku, you know, if your aku is not fully loaded. So therefore, it, it is very important to set aside in the morning a good time and to dive deep into a bhajan, read one verse every day and chant the teacher mantras without fail. So we cannot expect to, to have this love in our heart when we don't do anything. So this is my realization. Can I add something, Bhadivadi? Uh, what you talk about, it's really right for myself. I need to do this morning bhajan, and it's, it's uh, easier here in Vandara. I'm here for many weeks now. And my experience is also that it's important to have this um, in the evening before I go to bed to close this day and to think about my experiences and the hints I've got and the love I noticed and to check myself and to forgive me when I lose my mood and um, to say thank you that I can stay here and to appreciate everything. It's so important for me and sometimes I cannot believe that we have this chance as Europeans, as a German who grow up in a, I want to say, not say a dog-eating family, no, <laughs> um, a flesh-eating family and um, yeah, that I'm now here and <coughs> have this chance and to think about it every day. In the morning when I open the door and look out and see the trees and how they're moving in the wind, and I can say, wow, this is Vrindavan's wind. And he is a servant from Radharani. He brings her fragrance to Krishna. And to notice these gifts and to do this also back in the Western world, because where our mind and our heart is, there we are. This is what I heard <laughs> since childhood, where your heart is, is your home. And to remember to say, hey, I'm in Vrindavan. She is here. Their games are here. Now, in this moment, I cannot see anything, but when I see the parrots, and they are crying. 
they remind me of Smamini. She's not far. She's very close to us. And in Germany, we don't have parrots. Maybe it's another bird. Every bird can sing Smamini's um, coming or that, yeah, that she's close. And it's so wonderful. I feel my heart and I breathe in and breathe in her love, which is all around. And the same when I go to bed. It's not easy to forgive me when I check myself and I see, oh, this was no seva mood. This was not good. And I was criticizing others and myself. And then to say, okay, I'm on the way. This is um, my practice here every day to check and to watch and then to see what was the gifts and her hints. And there are so many gifts. When I open my eye or my eyes for this and open my ears and then, then I say, wow, I drank the whole day so much nectar. Nectar for me is not every time, um, it's not always fine and nice. Sometimes the nectar brings me a lecture and I can see what I can correct. And therefore I'm thankful. Thank you. I'm so thankful to be here with Guru Dev, to be here with Radha Mohan. Every day they're looking different in a different mood and so beautiful, so beautiful. And all the devotees, and it's so nice to watch them how they are acting. Oh, I'm talking very long. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank wonderful, you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. I only want to say that I finished my day also <laughs> with Bajan and to think about it, to finish it really for the night, hoping that I'm closer next day or maybe in the night with Radha Mohan. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. You see, that's such a wonderful point you made. You said in Vrindavan it is so easy and that is that is actually the evidence that bhajan and bhakti is is natural for the soul, you know. It's natural. And when you go back to the Western world, you can see it is completely the, the opposite. Everyone here is completely in the opposite mood. It is not natural and you have to fight to come into bhajan. And in Vrindavan, you can chant 64 rounds easily. You can chant 32 rounds very easily because then... <laughs> So much energy is there, so much beautiful energy is there. When you come to the Western world, it is completely the opposite. Everything is focused on the outside and not on the inside. So we always have to remember this experience we do in Vrindavan, that actually it is completely natural for the soul to be in, the, in Bhakti. This is a nice experience and you, you should really treasure it because here it's, it's the opposite. You have to more effort here. Thank you for sharing. Kishori, would you like to continue reading? Yes. I just saw that Gurudev is not muted anymore, so I thought he will say something, but I can continue reading also. These aspirations for Radharani's devotional service do not awaken in an ordinary heart. They will awaken in the heart of a person who is able to completely give up his dependence on the material world. How can Radha Dasya find a place in a heart which is filled with worldly feelings? <clears throat> the working of Maya must have disappeared from the mind 
and intelligence. The Lord tells Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, Mayar pita mano buddhir yomat bhakta seme priya. The devotee who has offered his mind and intelligence to me is very dear to me. Radha Dasya is even more difficult. Without full absorption, it cannot be accomplished. I want to share a little bit on this point. When I read this, I thought, my God, giving up the mind and intelligence, Krishna says, this is very dear to him. But Radha Dasya is even more difficult. What does Baba mean by this? Then I thought, yeah, the mind and the intelligence is one thing. But the whole self, the ego, the whole so-called self, what I feel myself, the ego of all that I thought I would be, that is another level. Maybe some devotee would like to share on this. I think this is the real point in Radha Dasya to come into a self-esteem that is out of this world, that is not anymore in this world. I'm a human being. I am acting here in my different services, in my different relationships, but my self-esteem is a servant of Srimati Radhika. I thought this is why Baba says Radha Dasya is even more difficult. It's not only the mind and the intelligence. It's the development of a completely new self-identification as a servant of Srimati Radhika. I think it's, it's therefore so difficult because it is the most selfless. It is the most selfless, Seva. So, so we are used, we are all used to have it our own way. You know, the Purusha mentality, even women and men both have that. But Baba is saying here, Radha Dasyam is even more difficult because, like you said, Suniti, it's not much difficult to go from the mind and intelligence, but honestly speaking, to live 24-7, completely selfless, this is the highest, the highest standard. And therefore, it's so difficult for the mind because he is not used to be selfless. That is the most difficult part, to be really selfless and to really, really see the, and do the things for others. That is the biggest challenge. That is, that is why it's so difficult. But on the other side, if we do it, every one of us has the experience that if we actually do it, the reward is even greater because then we, we, we are, the more selfless we are, the more blissful we are. But can I also share something? I feel like even this is very difficult to be 24-7 in my mind only, to be fixed all the time. And, and I actually checked where it is written in Bhagavad Gita. And I saw it's the 12th chapter, 13-14, which Gurudev recommended to read right after he gave Harinam to me. So the first thing he said to read was how to be a devotee. And that is the 12th chapter 13, 14 on, in Bhagavad Gita. And I tried this once. Like I wanted to break this, like because there is written, not be envious, be kind to everyone, always fixed with mind and intelligence and many other things. Even free from false ego is written there. And I decided to write down all of those different points and practice each one for one week. 
I said, okay, this week I will practice not being envious. And if I manage this, I will practice to be a kind friend to all living entities and so on. And that was a mission impossible for me, like from the very first, honestly, from the don't be envious, I already gave up and thought I will never be a devotee because this is, and also there is written, the devotee is equal in both happiness and in distress. I got, it's not possible for me. I am a totally rascal person. So I feel like this is very difficult. And now Baba is saying Radha Dasya is even more difficult. But I feel that the, the, the thing that gives me hope the most is that in our path, with all the mercy from Gurudev, <coughs> we can just depend on the Kripa, depend on the mercy. And of course, we have to do our morning bhajan and our sadhana. Nobody will do it for us. But without, you're right, Kishori, you're right. Without the mercy of Gurudev, without Guru Gripa, not possible. Can I share a little bit? Please. And, uh, so this is, uh, Baba mentioned, Radha Dasha is even more difficult. So Gurudev used to say, by the bhakti, we can behave externally. So internally may not have, but externally we can behave like chanting, you know, worshiping, etc. But uh, if we come Raganuga Bhakti, Baba mentioned Raganuga Bhakti is mental religion. So mental religion means uh, we have to meditate inside. And if we have tamasic, radasic guna is very strong, then we cannot uh, actually meditate. So we need some purification. So therefore, Raganuga Bhajan needs, so we are reading uh, a Saint of Guraja in Wednesday by Shridhar Bhaiya. So this uh, Baba mentioned this Babaji Maharaj, many Babaji Maharaj mentioned, Naganuga Bhajan need a purity in my heart, in our heart. And uh, we also, if Rajas too much, Tamas too much, is not so difficult, it's not so easy for meditate. And the plus, Sakyarasa, Basarasa, may practice without spiritual identity. We they sometimes say, but Radha Dasha is very special because if, if we don't have a spiritual body, if we don't have identity of spiritual uh, Dasi of Radhika, then very, very difficult to, to, to attain. So therefore, in that sense, at first, Bhakti Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti are different. Also, among the Raganuga Bhakti, Radha Dasha <coughs> means we need a spiritual body, and that need we, we need the mercy of Vaishnava, mercy of our Guru Dev, mercy of our Swamini, and the Swamini Mohan. So that's uh, I feel it. Okay. Jai Radha. I can only confirm this. Now I just saw that um, Maduram from Estonia is there in Gurudev's room. And he was Radha Radha Veya. He was the one who gave me mercy to take Harinam from Gurudev. And Tarun is here who gave me mercy to take Diksha from Gurudev. And so this is all Vaishnava mercy in my life that I am even here and trying, like even aspiring to understand or feel something between the lines in Vilab Kusumanjali. 
So without this mercy, I don't know where I would be. Dandava to you all. Ade. Srila Raghunathas Goswami was once absorbed in his bhajan in an open place on the bank of Shamakund while Krishna stood right behind him relishing the sweetness of this devotee's love. Just then, two tigers came to drink water from the kunda, passing by right before Raghunath. who did not notice anything, being completely absorbed. Srila Sanatana Goswami saw what happened from a distance and said, Raghunath, your fame will increase if you sit out here in the open. Bhajan, devoid of humility, is lifeless. Unless you engage body, words, and mind, you cannot savor the rasa of bhajan. I think it's very interesting, you know, when you when you look at yourself and I look at myself, when I sit somewhere like Radha Kund or on a, on, a, on a field or anywhere, so just imagine Raghunath Swami was not concerned that a tiger was approaching him, you know? And when I sit somewhere and a fly is coming and when some, some noise is coming, when some, anything happens, I open my eyes and I look. So every one of us, we can all check our absorption he was not even slightly moved by a tiger i mean a tiger every one of us we would run and run and run so he was sitting there and he was not even giving any attention to a tiger who could finish you in 10 seconds so this is this i think it's really really absorption so every one of us also had the experience when we have been deeply absorbed so actually this any word baba is saying is a is a teaching to us. So we should try to really go deep into meditation that not even a tiger can 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 bring us out of it. So this is this is high. Therefore, stay in a cottage and meditate on Swamini's form, qualities, and pastimes there. Sanatan Goswami, whose mind was sprinkled with love for Sri Raghunath, did not tell him what had actually happened. From that day on, the good dear system started at Radha Kund. Lacking his desired service, Sri Raghunath cries. But by Swamini's grace, he gets a transcendental vision of his Sita service. Tulsi use, uses a soft twig of a mango tree 
to brush Sri Radhika's teeth and pours water on Swamini's hands from the nozzle of a golden pitcher. The water becomes red when it runs over Srimati's hands. And the fragrant water she pours over her face becomes even more fragrant afterwards. Swamini spits the water with which she flushed her mouth into a golden lota. I have a question here. Please, this uh, water, when it runs uh, over Swamini's hands, it becomes red. Is it? Is this her anurag or Dev? Why does the water become red when it comes over Swamini's hand? Radhe Radhe Suniti, can you repeat, please? Yes, Gurudev. It says here that the water, what uh, Tulasi, Tulsi Manjari is, is flushing on Swamini's hand, it becomes red when it runs over her hands. And the fragrant water, what she pours over her face, becomes more fragrant. So I thought maybe because of Swamini's transcendental love for Bohan, is that why the rat water becomes red? Is that a, can you uh, share any feelings on that? Why the water becomes red? Red is the symbol of passion. Hmm. Passion means madness. Anything from this hand is happening is only for Krishna. She is so mad and mad. in love for Krishna. Anything is happening only for her. She cannot do anything out of that. Out that of the rock. <laughs> Out of, uh, out of this man, so much intense love is that. And is only for working, na? doing something. So it's so intense passion. Yeah. More doing. Yes. Yeah. So, like, what is there? For me, it's Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Bad night. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, intense. No cold. Uh, intense. Only it doing... Is, it's passion, yes. It's all the passion that flows on her body comes out even when she's flushed. Uh -huh. so, I mean, I, I have water even is teaching how to develop this passion in love. <laughs> love. <laughs> the fragrant means flavor. You see the Radha Sudhanidhi, the flavor of so many clothes. What Rishi wanted are in meditation for the Krishna, he became mad when he this fragrance, he yeah. is mad. You see? So her, everything, his smile is a fragrance for Krishna. His eyes blinking is a fragrance for Krishna. Everything creates the madness to Krishna. The flavor. Every flavor is from Mahara. 
space is coming, it's full of freedom. Baba is here, Tarun Baba can explain. Uh, our Gauranga Sundar, our Rasikas are there. I feel so happy when I listen from them. Mm. I think that I have to learn from all of them. So beautifully they explain, I cannot say. I am a student, I am learning. And every day I am learning by this association. This is your Shripa Suniti that you give this name Radha Dasyam <laughs> and it explained in the June classes and really the meaning of Radha Dasyam we understand. This is all your blessing Gurudev. I am made this from your Suniti, you do this. It will expand so big that whole world will relish the words of Baba, how his words are like a poetry. His line when I listen, I have no words to explain that. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Explain everything. <laughs> Only to feel it. I read it so much that I'm so excited to listen all the time. This. You see, always. And this Radhara Sudhani Guru, Vilav Kusumangali. Makes my life like this to un everything become crystal clear to understand. These books are is making us try how, and we are always in Sanchari bhav. How to be a sky to always to serve us? That these two books is helping us. I find, try to find many places. It's not like this book happened, not is going to happen. Is it? <laughs> <coughs> this book is written in Siddhadeya, in a eyebrow, in the golden words. Hundred time I listen this, but every time I listen is a new. It gives new feelings to me. I myself surprise what is there. How much I can go deep. Conditioned soul can go deep. So much to feel it. To leave with ourselves. Gauranga Sundar, wow, wonderfully he explained. Gauranga Sundar explained wonderfully. Jananda Maharaj explained wonderfully. This is our ex expansion of mercy of Baba. He was so merciful to me. He comes 15 days to stay in this temple when we are small child and give him he, Harikatha. Poor Vrindavan is coming to listen here in the big Prashadam house. It was so great time for us. I listen to uh, Narottam Das, Prem Bhakti Chandrika, whole Kartik from Baba directly, from verse to verse. When I read and listen that, 
I feel that I am listening still from him. So great mercy. One month I was there, he is explaining in Bangla. And I was so fortunate to develop so sweet katha, I cannot speak. So, though so nice realization he is writing, all is the pregnant and all is passion. When it will come, Rati, Sri Guru Charna Rati, says Uttam these are the teachers, mantris, who teach us how to develop passion and live in the fragrance. You see, only I put fragrance of somni to everyone, and I put everyday fragrance to live in this flavor. We have to meditate in the Kishore is 24 7. Yes. <laughs> yes. When the day will come, it will happen. The tigers are there. The tigers of Radakund. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we can switch off the tigers. <laughs> but we have to be absorbed. Yeah. Oh, Dave, so wonderful to hear you. So wonderful to hear you. Jai Ho. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, man. Big celebration. Big celebration. Nice. Even Coca Cola you got, Gurudev. What a special mercy. My small Coca Cola company. <laughs> <laughs> Only three. My God, Balaram, you have to bring more. <laughs> Balaram, Mercy. Tomorrow, Kanai is also coming. Yes, Kanai is already on the way, Gurudev. Yeah. yeah. Can I read a little bit more? Yeah. With the fingers of her left hand, Tulsi wipes Swamini's curly locks away from her limitlessly beautiful and lustrous forehead, cheeks and eyes to avoid that she becomes overwhelmed by remembering Shyama through the bluish color of these locks. Ma, we have to share something by on this point. Goranga Sundar, can you please share what you are feeling? Stop here and meditate. <laughs> With the fingers of her left hand, <coughs> Tulsi wipes Swamini's curly locks 
away from her limitlessly beautiful and lustrous forehead, cheeks, and eyes to avoid that she becomes overwhelmed by remembering Shama through the bluish color of these locks. This morning I was reading in Radha Rasa Sutanidi that actually the hairs of Radhika are not normal hairs, but each hair of Radhika is an emotion. So that grows out of her head. So her hairs are all emotion and completely spiritual and have nothing to do with normal hairs. This must be really, really special. So all each hair is an emotion of love for Krishna. That is beautiful. Yes, and if these emotions come too much to the front, come too much into her consciousness, then she might lose herself. She might faint or she might you know, develop more emotions. And because Tulasi is doing this service, she's keeping them a little bit to the side and making maybe a braid or trying to wipe off her face so that, you know, these services can be done without uh, Swamini fainting. She has always to uh, adjust to the situation what is necessary and to feel what is uh, Swamini's uh, uh, situation in, in any moment. So that's beautiful. She is also giving her emotions when she's massaging her <coughs> and touching her like now, but she's also regulating some emotions so that she can do her service, her morning service. Speciality yeah. is that they are preparing for the meeting. And if Swamini are uh, disturbed one, one, on one hand, disturbed by uh, the locks who remembers on uh, Krishna, then uh, it could be a disturbance in the meeting. So Manjari is taking care that everything is just in the right moment and the right place so that it, it becomes perfect. They, they take care of this meeting. So, because of this, the, she will... Uh, what's that for him then? Avoid. 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 The, that, that Radhika fill, uh, fell in a, in a deep trance. Uh, trance. And so then they cannot meet, maybe. And so she is preparing this, and this is always the, the expertise of the Manjaris, that they so nicely manage all this situation and, and even the, the minimal... Uh, the smallest details. Well, we lost them. But was so nice. I feel also this is so beautiful that last Sunday Gopinath was reading that the Manjaris have to, when Radhika is waiting in the Kunja and Mohan is not there, then she loses hope. And they have, they have to be so expert in their service that they come and say stories to Radhika about Mohan, how he's in the Kunja nearby, chanting her name and relishing her sweetness through the name, so that she also can become happy and overcome the lethal optic obstacles. And now it's the opposite. She's not with Mohan, but in a different situation. And Tulsi has to hold the locks back so that she doesn't become overwhelmed. And like Suniti says, later she will massage that she feels like it's Mohan massaging her. So it's so beautiful how they so expertly according the situation 
have to serve in the nice portions at the right time. It is the service of Pava Mai, whose Mahabhav is thus welling up. When Tulsi takes Swamini into the bathroom after combing her hair, she gives Swamini a matchless savor by showing her a sweet picture of Shama Sundar there. So just before she's keeping the hair, that Radhika doesn't become overwhelmed. And then they go to the next room and she's showing a picture of Shama Sundar to her. Pointing at the picture with her finger, Tulsi says, your teeth look like pomegranate seeds that attract the parrot of Vrindavan. Here he is. Look at him. Vishaka had drawn that picture when she had just fallen in love with Krishna in Purvarag. Tulsi reminds Swamini of the sweet history of that picture, saying, Swamini, I remember you once wrote a letter to Mohan saying, You are living in my house as a picture. And whenever I flee, there you are, standing to stop me with stretched out arms. <coughs> In this way, Tulsi makes Swamini relish the sweetness of her previous pastimes and simultaneously washes her mouth and brushes her teeth. Blessed is this maidservant. This is the internal beauty of Radha Dasya. Absorbed in identification with the guru given Siddhas Varup, one serves Swaminiji's Ujvala Murti. Now Tarun wants to say something. I said it, I, I spoke about this before, and Baba is now <laughs> Baba is now giving the point. He's saying that without this guru giving information about our Swarup, there will be no absorption, there can be no stai bath, there can be no identification. So we need this information, who we are and what is the goal, and we have to mentally conceive of it from the beginning. Gurudev is whispering this information into our ears. And every day we have to put water on that little little plant and always, always identify with that that name, that form, the color, the dress, the seva, whatever you receive from your Gurudev is the most valuable information you have. Baba is saying here, this is 
And the Swarup will be attained by, by the mercy of Sri Guru. And this is what, what Gurudev is saying, you know, Radhika's lotus feet are the goal and Guru is bringing you there. So Siddha Pranali is of utmost importance that we can identify us, that we can be absorbed. And this is what is really, really most valuable. Most valuable. And how Guru will bring us there? The aspirant should learn services like toothbrushing by meditating on how the eternally perfect maidservant totally <coughs> performs them. They are the gurus of the Yugala Seva that have descended from the Vraja Nikunja along with Sriman Mahaprabhu to take the neophyte devotees out of this material world into the Nikunja abode by teaching them Manjari Bhav Sadhana. Tatbhava Lipsuna Karya Raja Lokanu Sharata. Those who desire that mood follow in the footsteps of the people of Raja. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Who are the people of Raja? I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Baba is continuing. Sri Rupa and Raguna Taskoswami are these people of Raja that have given the sadhakas a perfect example of how to perform Manjari Seva both in the internal and external bodies. That's Therefore, Vilapakusa Manchali is like a manual, you know. It's such a every verse of Raghunathas Goswami is, is teaching us how to do it, you know. First, Gurudev is saying we should strengthen our faith and our Nishta in Radhika. And when we have this absorption in Radhika by Radharasa Sudanidi, we can we can enter into the manual of how to do Manjari Bhav. And each of the verse of Vilabakus Manjali is actually, if like if you, if, you buy, if you build something, if you build a car, if you build anything, there is always a manual, always a how to do it. And Vilabakus Manjali is the highest manual in the universe. So this is the perfect manual for, for you know, where can you read such things? Washing the hair of Swamini, washing her feet, even, even Raghunathas is saying he's using his hair to try the latrine. I mean, this is really, really, really private. This is really, really close. The Lalita and Vishaka can never dream of such activities. They can never, ever take their hairs off and clean the latrine of Radhika with their own hairs. Never, ever would Radhika allow this. And you see how how dear and how close the manjaris are to Swamini, that she is allowing this. She would never, <coughs> you would, Kishore, you would never allow anyone to clean your latrine with, you know, so see, you can see how close the manjaris are to Swamini, that she is even allowing this seva, this lowly, lowly seva, which is the highest for the manjaris. So therefore it's so special. No, no Saki can do this. Lalita cannot do this. Vishaka cannot do it. What to speak of the parents? The parents don't know anything about that. Mother Yashoda and Nanda Baba and all these Ketita and uh, Vishabhanu Maharaj, they never can know these things. So we sit here on a Sunday afternoon and we hear these things, which, which even those persons cannot know and cannot hear. Shiva and Narada and Brahma, they cannot meditate about this. 
just imagine that fortune, you know, this is, this is something, you know, and for this, we are eternally grateful to Baba, to Gurudev, who is enlightening us, to Advaita Prabhu, who, who, who translated it, to uh, uh, Ananda Kupal Goswami, who, who, who gave the, the classes on Vilapa. So we are so eternally thankful to these Mahachans that we can sit here on a Sunday afternoon listening to a manual how to wash the hair and the feet and the forehead of Swamini. I mean, this is, you cannot pay, you cannot buy this anywhere in any universe. That is, I feel like that. You know, some people say that life is so difficult. It would be so nice if life comes with the instructions manual. And this life, in our case, actually comes with the manual of Vilapa Kusumanjali. So we are so fortunate. <laughs> I really want you to say something, my dear Goranga. Rade, Rade. Oh. <laughs> All this, what Tarun and all of you, and especially Gurudev was talking about, is because we are living in the age of Gorasundar. And if we appreciate, and if we are aware of it, then we can be able to relish. This is very unique age. And also the jivas who are appear in this age are very, very unique. So it's not just by chance that every one of us appears here in this Kali Yuga. But not ordinary Kali Yuga. Many Kali Yugas are coming. But only in this Kali Yuga, Goranga is appearing. And then after so many yugas, Kali yugas, we have to wait to again receive this kind of mercy because this is the special mercy of Radhika to give such a low persons, completely unqualified. She is giving opportunity to attain this such a sublime, most sublime position. And Baba in the beginning of commentary is saying, he is lamenting because he wants to point out that we should be aware of it. That this Manjari Bhav manual is such a rare, extremely rare gift. And only by Goranga, only by Nitai, and Gora Bhakta Vrinda, we are now taking like granted that we are listening. This is normal what we are doing. We are listening. But actually, it's really, really great fortune and our Sukritis, we can say also like this. This our Sukritis, samskaras. I don't know how we made it. Most probably not because of our own endeavor. But someone gave to us this Sukritis. And when we met a Gurudev, Anantadas Babaji, or other exalted Rasik devotees, they gave us Sukritis. Their own Sukritis they carved in our hearts. And in, through this Sukritis, we received some spiritual intelligence, some spiritual discriminations, some spiritual ability to listen, to meditate, to talk, and so on. Because only they gave to us their own Sukritis. And if we are really aware of it, immediately we will be humble. Because what I did, 
I did everything opposite, actually. But representative of Nitai came in my heart, which is even worse than liquor shop. Nitai came in my heart through his representative, enlightened at least a little bit with his light, not with my light. He put his light in my heart. So, I don't know what to say. This is just causeless kripa, causeless kripa. Which kind of sadhana I can practice? This is a funny sadhana I have to do, yes, of course, but this is a funny. <laughs> this kind of sadhana will not bring me anywhere. But maybe I can show some sincerity through these little attempts and maybe one day lifetime the soon as possible but we cannot force it we cannot demand you have to do it you have to give me yes you will give me but you know the proper time <laughs> condition and this is why manjari baba is so difficult because it's, like Tarunji said, it's completely free of any kind of selfish desire, even spiritual selfish desires. Because spiritual selfish desires are manifesting in Vaikuntha. Spiritual selfish desires are manifesting in Dvaraka. But those places are not place for natural love. Natural love is present in Vrindavan because there is no any particle of selfish desire, and especially in Manjari Bhav. So only someone who is deeply absorbed in Manjari Bhav can model us, and we should learn from such kind of personalities. How, like Tarunji said, through this beautiful manual. Who opened the door of the bathroom? Eternal. Radhe Radhe Gurudev. Radhe Radhe, enjoy the party. <laughs> May I say something before you finish? I was... Uh, uh, when you, that, I don't know the name of that lady, the voting lady. She says something important that you catch my, my, my intelligence. You said that you have to learn from Gurudev. And Gurudev will learn from Ananda by Das Maharaj, right? In Vrindavan and Braj, you said that only the residents can make you understand what you are looking for. If you go in a place where you never been, you fly, for example, from Croatia to Peru, you have to know the tradition, the culture. So who better than Vrajabasi of number one residence? They are directly you should take a class from a, a Rajabasi, I think. So the picture will be more clear what Prabhu Goranga said. That's why he, he still you go around, go around, go around. And Goranga, Goranga, Goranga he got a point. But you miss one important point. That is the... If I have to go to somebody who is a resident, I will be more inform inf information that they want that someone that is not resident in some places. So make a class, ask a Vrajabasi, enlightenment, a spiritual person, soul that is directly in contact <coughs> what you are looking for. That is my opinion to answer to the lady devotee. That she was saying, residents. The residents are there. So come here, look, observe, as Goranka said, 
and something it will appear. But it's not only in an ideal. We have to live for Shila Prabhupada. He lived here 12 years. And he come from Bengal, the Vaishnava family. Why 12 years? He took sannyas. He goes in deeply in the culture of, the, of, the, of Vrindavan. He didn't go to Varanasi. He could go. So if you go to Varanasi, you have to understand the mood, as Goranga say. You have to understand the mood of the places. If you want to go to the moon, you have to understand the moon. And the people who live in the moon. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you very much. Now I'm satisfied to say to you something. It's very important. I live here in Vrindavan, up and down for 40, 35 years. So I know something about how the Vrajabasi are in contact. So that's my idea to share with you, with my love. I have no interest, my only interest to see you more deeply in the loving affair that you have. And everything will be beautiful. We can share vacation, we can share love. He can stay, Goranga can stay there. It's uh, the moral, <laughs> always in the joyful mood, the positive. You know, I've been attracted when he speaks. Why? Because he got many points that i been very attractive in what is the explanation that he does through Sadhu, uh, uh, your Guru, etc. But you have to understand how the bells, how the campana, the campana, hallelujah. <laughs> you understand? So come here, make a question as a reporter to a resident of here, a Brahman of here, how everything works, and then your life will be very clear, very successful, and you can serve Radha Krishna, Radha Mohan, Radha, whatever you want to serve. As Goranga said, serving is the key of loving, and serving is the key to go deeply <coughs> in all the details that you want to know. And lovely, lovely, lovely life. Thank you. Try it right. again. Let's all go to Vrindavan. Nitai. Oh, please come. <laughs> And stay here with me, with Sadhu Maharaj, with the local residents. I will introduce whatever you want. And at the end, we can chant and we can go everywhere we want Re with practical realization. Otherwise, here it's only idea. <coughs> and if you work on idea, so many speculations can come and many confusion can come. As Krishna said in the, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, I will remember this point. Or even the Veda can confuse the devotee, but it not a Rajabasi. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rase Shwadi, in the Zoom Seva. Gracias, Tessara Nagati. And take also. Radhe Radhe. Sanna, to all of you? Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Sanna Saranagati. Tarunji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe to all. Radhe Radhe. He was making, he was making a very nice point. <laughs> exactly, exactly what Rupa Goswami was making. You know, we should follow the residents of Pracha, but we have to be also very careful because we need the same mood. Rupa Goswami is saying we have to follow the residents of Pracha in our own mood. So this is very important to learn from the Pracha Basis who are exactly in our mood of Manjari Bhav. Jai Sri Rati. This is conclusion. Rajaloka Anusarata <laughs> in Sajatya Sangha. Thank you very much. Radhe.